Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pixel Village and I'm Radha Krishna. One of our earlier videos which we did around the time when we started our channel, we talked about the importance of calibrating your camera in order to capture an accurate image. We actually wanted to follow it up by doing another video on the importance of calibrating your monitor and the printer. Okay, now you guys set up for the next shot. In the meantime, let me go and uh, catch a coffee. Okay, can I have a coffee? Bitter. Kheer banaye kya? Milk kya? There's no coffee in it. There's only milk. Ah, filter coffee. Ah, nice aroma. Ah, too much sugar. You call this coffee? I think I should go and get it from the barista. <laughs> Their coffee is slightly different. Mm. While all the other coffees were good, this one is slightly different, like I said. Because uh, they have a series of uh, coffee shops across the country. And whichever coffee shop that you walk into at whatever time of the day or night, you are guaranteed of a coffee which tastes, feels, smells the same every time. And the rest, well, while the coffee is good, it need not necessarily taste the same way every time. It depends on a lot of variables, including the mood of the man who made that coffee uh, that day. If he had a bad coffee in the morning, chances are that you will also have a bad coffee that day. Anyway, how are these people managing the coffee this way? Is because uh, they have introduced a set pattern of uh, coffee making into their system. Right from the place they source the coffee beans, the milk, the water, and the way they grind the coffee, the way they fill the coffee powder into the porta filter, and even the pressure in which they tamp the coffee in the porta filter. Well, all determines the quality and the taste of the coffee, not exactly the mood of the man who's making the coffee. So that is how they maintain a certain quality standards in their coffee. Now, how is this metaphor relevant to us? It is relevant because as photographers, we move around the countryside taking pictures alone and as in groups. Wedding photographers these days, they work in groups and they use various different brands to shoot, you know, and they collect the images and when they bring it to their monitor, they usually see what they are seeing on the screen is different from what they thought they saw on location and what they thought they captured in their camera. It's because the way in which each pixels of the camera sensor sees and understand an image and interprets the color and the brightness value into a digital data is different from the way uh, a pixel of a monitor translate them into an image. Leave alone the printer. Uh, a bunch of people who are definitely much more intelligent than most of us uh, have put a system in place from capture to edit to distribution. It's called color management. The term may sound very simple, but it can be as complicated as hell. And I don't want to go there and I'm not very keen on taking you also there. But at the same time, I wouldn't want anyone to be moving around blissfully in the land of ignorance. So in this video, I am attempting to simplify that uh, complicated science of color management and present it to you in the best possible way a college dropout can. In our video on uh, calibrating the camera to get best colors, we used a color checker passport a device from X-Rite. We used this and we generated a color correction profile in Adobe Lightroom and we saw how the colors got corrected itself when we applied that onto the image. Now, to get 
the colors right on a monitor, we require to calibrate the monitor. To calibrate like this for the camera, we require a similar device for the monitor. And it's called, of course, the monitor calibrating device. And here, I'd like to introduce you to i1 Studio from x -Rite. This is a spectrophotometer using which you can calibrate a host of devices like a projector, a monitor, a printer, a scanner, all that can be calibrated using this device. The next thing that you require is obviously a good monitor. Today, we are using an ASUS PA329Q. The process is very simple. It's exactly like how we calibrated our camera. So the camera captured this image, the software measured the captured value, uh, it compared it with the reference value and created a compensation profile, which we applied and we got our colors right. Similarly, when you display an image, we apply the value, which is the difference between the reference value and the displayed value. Okay. So first we have to measure the monitor and then decide how much compensation that needs to be applied so as to match the reference value. Which means once that is done, a calibrated camera and a calibrated monitor will talk the same language and display the image perfectly. Let's get into action. Now, this is the hardware. It also requires a software to run it. The software is free. You can download it freely from uh, the X-Ride website. It's called i1 Studio Profiler. Uh, download it and install it in your computer and uh, launch the i1 Studio. This is the home menu. And uh, you can, like I said, you can uh, calibrate a series of uh, devices. Here we are interested in uh, calibrating a display. Uh, click on that. The options in front of you are photo, video and custom. If you click on photo, it will automatically uh, calibrate this monitor for the best state of the monitor to display a photo on it. If you choose to do a custom control, then you can click here and select your favorite settings. So if you're working in um, interior standard lighting conditions, uh, the preferred setup for the white point is D65. White point basically means the way in which the white in the screen is displayed. Now, it also depends on the light in which you are viewing. But the recommended white point is uh, D65. Now see what happens if I switch to D75. The white point shifted towards blue. Now at D55, it started becoming warmer. And at D50, it became even more warmer. Doesn't mean that the image has warmth in it, but it will appear to be warm to you. So best is to keep it as neutral as possible. D65 is recommended. Next parameter that we have to control is the luminance. Basically, uh, determines the brightness of the panel. Uh, it is expressed in CDM square. The unit is candela. For photo, 120 is preferred. And if you are using your monitor for grading, editing video, then you prefer, uh, uh, the preferred value is 160. Now, currently I'm going to uh, set it to 120 because what we're discussing is photo, so 120, okay? The next one is gamma. It's called the tone response curve. It basically, uh, again, like I said, it's, 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 that's where things get complicated in color science or color management. Put it in simple language, this is how the, uh, the image brightness value is conveyed to the monitor because in the camera sensor, the light is received and converted into, uh, you know, digital values. Here, digital values is converted back as brightness values, okay? So the correction that is required to get the accurate uh, brightness onto the screen is arrived upon choosing the appropriate uh, 
tone response curve values. The usual preferred value is 2.2. Okay, next one is a uh, flare correct. Uh, these days, lots of monitors, including the IMAX, have uh, glossy screens. It creates a little flare. So if you're using a glossy monitor, click this on so that the device makes necessary corrections for the flare. Now, the ASUS monitor that we're using is a matte monitor, uh, no, no flare. So I'm going to uncheck it. Well, so the initial preparation is done. I say next. The device status, please rotate the dial to calibrate. So the software will now calibrate the i1 Studio. Before every use, the software will calibrate this device. So this is the device. Uh, so for do that, to do that, I need to rotate the device. While it is on like that, I need to press calibrate. It'll take two minutes. Uh, and it'll give you, it'll tell you when it is calibrated. Device is calibrated, but not ready to measure. Turn the device dial to the indicated position to get. So that's the indicated position. I'm gonna turn it back. Okay, now the uh, device is ready to calibrate. Now, to calibrate, I have to put it back into the sleeve. Okay, let me put it back into the sleeve zip it up and of course there is a small window here i need to open that window so that device see the monitor properly and hang the device at the center of the monitor and now the device is ready to measure you see these uh, reference charts these colors are supposed to be reproduced in a certain way what this device will do is the deviation from the expected value and will provide you a correction profile, which is, which is what we need to apply. Okay, so start measurement process. It'll ask you to slightly slant the monitor so that it stays in place. Make sure that the device is perfectly placed right in the middle of the monitor. Also make sure that this monitor is hot and it is been on for at least 30 minutes before you actually start uh, calibrating. Of course, there are very expensive monitors which doesn't require a warming up, but this one does. Uh, there are lots of controls that you can uh, do manually. So currently I've kept RGB, I'm not going to mess up with RGB. I'm going to control the contrast and brightness. I'm going to press next and the software start working now. It's testing the contrast now. Measured brightness value here is 108 and what we need is 120 and the device is asking me to increase the uh, brightness. So I go to the brightness and I increase it slowly. And you can see the uh, measured brightness value increasing. The idea is to bring it close, as close as possible to 120 I'm saying next okay now the device start measuring the, uh, the the color values the software is now uh, reading uh, color values from 118 different patches okay and how it is currently displayed on this monitor while the device is doing that let me have another sip of the coffee Mm, it's gone cold. So it has finished uh, reading all the values and uh, in the next step, it will create a profile. So click save, it'll create an ICC profile and say profile is created uh, successfully. So here, what you see is the name of the profile. Now PA329 and a code number. So what I do is I change it, uh, saying that uh, photo and today's date. So I we are on the 5th of Feb, so 0402. 
so I know when I have cal calibrated it. And I say profile remainder, I usually keep it at two weeks. So this is the target and this is what we have achieved. Whatever that we have achieved is very close to the target and the calibration is done. Um, let's look at the graph. So you are supposed to get a perfect line from top to bottom. You see only a minor deviation from that. Now let's look at uh, uh, what we have achieved in the terms of calibration. Yeah, before and after. There is definitely a difference. Wasn't that uh, easier than finding a good coffee? It is. The i1 Studio and the Color Checker Passport are very important ingredients in this whole process. Now, I agree that they are expensive, but uh, very unlike the monitor, you don't need to own one all by yourself because you don't require these products on a daily basis. In fact, a group of photographers together can buy this, share the cost, because you will need it only once in two weeks, as you saw. Of course, you need to have a good monitor. So we're going to soon have another video on how to select a good monitor. This is not just a promise. We're going to definitely have it as early as possible. Bye for now. Hey, I think I have to make one more trip to the barista.